Thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, I pray that you will come and minister to us, Lord. I pray that you will come with releasement of new gifts for us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will come with uh, stirring up the gifts that the ones we have, Lord. I pray that you come with mm, stronger outpouring on your love on other gifts, Lord. I pray for that. I pray for more open doors in the ones we have, Lord. And I pray, Lord for new ones to be opened. The deepening sense of, of your love, Lord, in that mm, mm, I pray, Lord, that you'll help me to To give out your words, Lord, I need your help, Lord. I need your help, Lord. I need your help, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will minister in the words, Lord. I pray, Lord, whatever... I sense some weird stuff is going to happen, and I pray, Lord, that whatever weird stuff our flesh thinks is weird, Lord, I pray that we will do it anyway, because in your deep anointing, the flesh is resisting. So I pray, Lord, the flesh get nervous, and we want to do stuff. We want to move around and do stuff when the flesh get nervous in your anointing. I pray, Lord, that we will keep on pressing in, Lord, in the anointing. I pray for that. I pray for that, Lord. I pray that you will reveal for us. Now it's just your flesh getting nervous, but just keep praying, just keep going in, just keep pushing in the anointing. There is a sweet anointing here today. I pray for that, Lord. I pray that you will give me order and direction in whatever it is I need to do today, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Jesus, for your sweet love. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet love. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for giving your son. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. And most of all, Lord, thank you for uh, being resurrected. Ha So we have the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for that. Today I'm going to speak about uh, the body of Christ as a, in a church part and, and individually. And uh, first I'm going to go into the text about the church, how we show how we um, how important it is in the church. And I'm taking out the text of 1 Corinthians 12. And Paul is saying about it. For just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts, and all the parts, though many, form only one body. So all the different parts becomes one unity. So it is with Christ. We need to take our business serious in Jesus. We need to take it serious, otherwise the body of Christ does not work. For by means of the personal agency of one Holy Spirit, we were all, whether Jews, Greeks, slaves or free, baptized and baptism united together. We're all together. We all need each other into one body and all made to drink of one Holy Spirit. A one Holy Spirit. For the body does not consist of one limb or organ, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, if my foot should say, I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it be therefore not a part of the body? Yes, it would. So if I reject 
who I am in Christ, if I don't take my spiritual gift seriously and really dig into what it is, I don't feel I belong, but I do belong. And the foot is going to hang there. We know many people who are feeling alone, right? Even though we're in the body of Christ. If the whole body were one eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? Just going to let them hang there a little bit because your anointing is here. Get revelation for yourself in this. Draw on it. But as it is, God has placed and arranged limbs and organs in the body, each particular one of them, just as you wished and saved and saw fit and with the best adaption. The Lord has made all of this, has made all of you, all of us, unique. <laughs> and now there are certainly many limbs and organs, but a single body. And the eye is not able to say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. But instead there is absolute necessity for the parts of the body that are considered more weak. And those parts of the body which we consider rather ignoble are the very parts which we invest with additional honor and our seemingly parts and those unsuitable for exposure are threatened with seemliness, modesty and decorum. <laughs> so it means that, <laughs> oh, it's so important we get this. <laughs> There are some parts of my body that I may consider less important, but they are not. Some parts of my body that I think is not uh, so important that I take care of that, but it is also because we can't see them. We can't see the brain. But that's one thing we know is really important, right? Otherwise we get depression and stress and all of that. We could. The heart, we need to take care of ourselves. All the little things, all the little things. Which are more presentable parts do not require. See, when something is obvious, if I get something on my leg, I can see there's something wrong. But if I get something in my liver, I can't see it. So it's obvious. The other part is obvious, right? So they don't require that kind of honor. The most important parts of our body is the inner part, right? It's the inner parts. We need to honor them. How do we honor we take care of them. It's such a good picture of how we honor Jesus. If we don't honor and love ourselves, take care of ourselves, <laughs> it's very difficult to walk if you have a broken leg. You know, it adds up. It's so important. But God has so adjusted, mingled, harmonized, and subtly proportioned the parts of the whole body, giving great honor and richer endowment to the inferior parts. So God has actually, 
would lack apparent importance. So God has actually put a very large importance to, to the parts we can't see. Who in the church is it that we can't see? It's people sitting in the back who've been praying for 40 years. It's not the preacher. It's not the preacher. It's people doing the things, making the church work. It's not the preacher. The preacher is important, but we emphasize too much on the preacher, the worship team, and all of that. But if people haven't been praying, I know people who've been praying for years, and those prayers I'm personally standing on. Unknown people. It's so important. We're all in this. And, and, and the honor God is giving them is that when they're in heaven, they're going to be first in the row. <laughs> Not the ones we see. It's so important that we honor these people, honor their ways, honor who they are. It's so important in the church. So that there should be no division or discord or lack of the adaption of the parts of the body to each other. <laughs> but the members, of, uh, members all alike should have a mutual interest and care for one another. If my throat is hurting, it affects my whole body. What does my body do? It rushes to fix. It doesn't depart the rest of my body. Not like humans. <laughs> Well, we're out of here. Check out, you know, we're out of here. No, they rush as a natural instinct in the body. Right? That's how we should act in the church. Somebody's limping. Somebody's hurting. Somebody's lacking something. React. Don't just sit and pray for them. React and pray too. But react first. Just like the body, my insomnia doesn't go, well, maybe I should, we should pray about it if we're going to help the throat being fixed. No, they just do it instantly. Like parents wants to help their children. It's the same. And if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. That's true, right? If my brain doesn't work, part, you know, it, my whole body's going to suffer. If one member is honored, ooh, I like this, all the members share in the enjoyment of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we might not feel it, but if I'm getting honor, you're getting honor. Mm -hmm. We might not feel that. Therefore, we should be very careful about being jealous, you know? So because you are getting that honor. We all, I am getting that honor when you're being honored. I am getting that too. It's for me too, because we're connected in the body of Christ. Now you collectively are Christ's body and individually you are members of it. And each, each part severely and distinct, each with its own place and function. What are your function? I'm going to read up these spiritual gifts. I wrote them all down. I'm going to read them up. God, no, I'm going to do that later. So it's so important that, you know, in the Old Testament, if, if somebody were got their land back, if some of the Israelites got their land back, and the ones that hadn't received it yet, the ones they got it, they fought with the ones that hadn't received it yet. They fought together. <laughs> we got to fight together. This is not a one-way, you know, walk here. So God has appointed some in the church for his own use. First apostle, special messengers, second prophet, inspired preachers, and expounders, third teachers, then wonder workers, I like that word, wonder workers, <laughs> then those with ability to heal the sick, helpers, administrators, speakers in different unknown tongues, all the apostles, special messengers, 
Are all the apostles special messengers? Are all prophet inspired interpreters of the will and purposes of God? Are all teachers do all have the power of performing miracles? Can you feel the flesh rising in this? Yeah, I want to be important too. Do all possesses extraordinary powers of healing? <laughs> do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire and seriously cultivate the greatest and best gift and graces, the higher gifts and the choices graces. And yet I will show you a still more excellent way. There is one thing that is beyond all of these things that I've just said. That is the excellent way. There is one gift that is above all of these. One that is better by far and the highest of them all, love. And guess what comes after this? The greatest gift Paul wrote in 13 here. Then he goes into the text of speaking of tongues. And right before that, you know, is there is a building up in the scripture, and before that, so they connect. Before that, you have the spiritual gift describing, then you have this, what I just wrote, the, the body of Christ, and then he goes into speaking about the love. The love. And out of the love is being poured out these gifts so we can walk and minister in, in, in different ways. It's so beautiful. I'm going to go back in the text here. I'm going to, I'm going to start on 12.1 in Corinthians. So, I, we have this body of Christ as a church, and then we have my own personal body of Christ. My own personal body of Christ... I need to find out what it is I can develop myself into in Him. I'm going to read the gifts. And what is it that I need to do in order to take care of myself? Maybe I need to sleep more. Maybe I need to eat more right food. Maybe I need to do more right things for myself. If I can't do it for me... <laughs> I can't do it for others. It's kind of obvious, but, <laughs> but for so many it's not. We just get entangled in everyday life and suddenly we're in this stream of whatever goes on and old habits comes on us and then we just go into the old ways of life. It's so important. Which part of my body is not working? It resembles, I'm going to do a teaching on that. It resembles a spiritual thing that's not working. It's so important. It's so important. So if, um, I'm just going to do this. If I'm not taking my gifts seriously, there's a hole in the body of Christ. And if another one is not doing it, and another one, and another one, and another one is not taking their gifts serious for the Christ. And another one, and another one, and another one. Where is the body of Christ at the end? It's not there. It's gone. It's not a whole. It's not a unity. It's talking about a unity. So it's not a unity any longer. It's broken. And then we take... Communion, <laughs> to show each other that we belong together. We belong together. I just love that picture. We belong together in Jesus. So it's so important that the part that's me, that I take it serious. 
Right? It's so important. This is not just... How can we get it more in our everyday life? How can we understand, know deeper, in a deeper way how important this is? The church is suffering. The church is not even like this anymore. It's all like, you know, it's broken. I hear the cry of the Lord in this. It's broken. It, my plate doesn't fit it, but you get the picture. It's broken. Because too many people think, if I don't take my spiritual gifts in particularly serious, it's just hurting me. No. And if you can't do it for yourself, well, do it for your children or the church or somebody else or for Jesus. If it helps you to do it, if you think, can think like that. But we got to take this much more serious. The way we act, the way we speak, the way we do things, the way we act towards each other, the way we... When I come into the church, do I know I am important? <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are important. Every one of us. I'm not more or higher than anyone, but we're all important. There is no church. As you can see, if the bread is broken, then there is no church. That's the picture of the church today. And there is such love in the church when it's the way the Christ wants it. Not a, a nice way. I'm not talking nice. I'm talking radical fire or you're on your floor crying your eyes out for Jesus. You're worshiping with everything within you. That's church. Yeah. It's not singing po polite hallelujah or whatever. It's not. Let's go down. Let's go deeper. Let's pour our heart out to him. We need so much more of that. And people, you can feel in the room with there is tension of stepping out into the anointing. I can feel it. I can feel the tension. I don't experience many churches where there is no tension. I actually don't think I've ever experienced one. Maybe I've been to the wrong one. I don't know. But there is tension, especially here in Denmark. There is tension. And you can't move in the anointing in tension. Because tension is the flesh. You can't move in the anointing. You can't heal the Holy Spirit. It's so important that when we feel the anointing, when we feel the presence of the Lord, that we move in it, that we, move, that we stay present. How do we move in the anointing? What do we do? Do I just stand and look at my iPhone? That's not really honoring the Lord. I've seen many people in churches sitting with their phone, not because they're looking at the Bible. <laughs> Please, let's honor the Lord. Shabara sakudia doromura, right? Yeah, let's do that, you know. Let's move with the Holy Spirit. It looks weird, man. It looks weird when we move with the Holy Spirit. It's not good-looking stuff. It's not. It looks weird. Body is doing weird stuff. The things comes out as weird. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's move with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because then there can come more. If we can't move in the Holy Spirit, if we can't move in the anointing like that, we, we're the ones stopping the anointing. Because we're not receiving it. We have to draw on it. We have to pull in out on it. Oh, I like that when the Spirit comes and talks like that. Thank you, Lord. I love that. Much more, much more of that. If the Holy Spirit to do, you ask you to do things that seems radical, do it. Just do it. Don't think, 
do it. Shabbat Asakudia, also in your life, just do it. People who were asked to grow their beard, people who were asked to weird stuff, weird stuff. Let's do it. Let's not be. Oh, I'm so sick of this politeness. It makes me, yeah. I think the Holy Spirit is too. <laughs> Shabbat. Oh, yes. Hi. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hi, I'm just gonna slip. Wait a minute. Sakudia, the Rama Rabara Sakudia, Donama. Lord, I'm praying for this church, this the way you want church, not the way we want church. Lord, help us to come deeper into your way of church, Lord, the way you want church. Can we do things differently at home? Can we, do we dare be the one that uh, stepping out for Jesus? Jesus was extremely radical and is extremely radical. We have seen nothing of Jesus in these times. We got to see more. And I'm asking for more, Lord. I am asking for more of that. We have enough... Um, <laughs> Sermons on your word. Uh, that's not really what we want and need, Lord. And I'm pressing in, Lord, for more anointing and for more of you in every way, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will come out and minister. Hmm. Minister the way you want to minister to us. I pray for that, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, right now. Speak to us individually, Lord, what it is you want us to do, Lord. What it is that you want us to do. It could be a thing in our lives that we do every day. We need to change. We need to do different. Speak to us, Lord. It could be right now. It could be tomorrow. It could be new lines of life, new paths, Lord. I, I speak to us, Lord. I pray, Lord, speak to us. Mm. Hallelujah, Lord, for you. Hallelujah, Lord, for you. Hallelujah, Lord, for you. We need you, Lord, we need you. Need you, need you, need you. Yaba, 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 yaba. Let's move deeper, 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 deeper. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Masharadiyarararararamara. We need you, Lord, need you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm. Sweetness of you, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hoboro sokodi odoromoro nakaniyana no moro sokoromoro. Pray, Lord. Lord, I pray for your faith to be released higher, deeper, more, Lord, so that we can go out and do whatever, whatever you want us to do, Lord. Whatever. I pray for that, Lord. Releasement of your faith in all the gifts, 
in everything and all who we are, Lord. I pray, Lord, for your love in that, Lord. Fire of love in that, Lord. Mm. I'm just going to read a little bit. This is the text before the spiritual gift. Unity and diversity is called. I'm going to read from 12 to 4. You can just keep praying on your own in that. But I'm just going to read the gifts out. I think it's important today. Now that there are distinct varieties and the distributions of endowments, gift, extraordinary powers, I like that, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in the souls by the Spirit. Whoa, yes, Lord. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. Everything that makes the spiritual gifts move is the same, but the gifts are different. And there are distinct varieties of service and administration, but it's the same Lord who is served. We all serve one Lord in the gifts. We don't serve to become higher, more important in any way whatsoever. We actually serve to become lower and lower, less in the flesh. I love that. And there are distinguished varieties of operation and working, of working to accomplish things. But it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. But to each one is giving the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. And profit, your profit. To one is given and in through the Holy Spirit the power to speak, the message of wisdom, the message of wisdom, and to another the power of to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. To another, wonder-working faith. Wow. Wonder-working faith. I love that. By the same Holy Spirit, to another, extraordinary powers of healings by one Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To an another, prophetic insight the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose to another, the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and the false ones to another, various kinds of unknown tongues to another, the ability to interpret such tongues. All these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. And then comes the part that I read before. Ooh, nice strong words that is. I like that. Wonder working, that's a new word. I like that. I'm going to adopt that. <laughs> Wonder-working faith. We want to have that, Lord. Lord, speak to people. I'm going to read the gifts. Just receive. If you feel one, God is highlighting one, that's how he does it with me. He highlights it. like in, It comes in Mark when he speaks to me. And so I'm just going to read the gifts and just receive. Exhortation is like a mentor. Um, exhortation is also a person who, who's telling the person, watch out for this, and it's better if you do it like that. Not, not a priest, but it's like a... I actually wrote coaching. 
because a coaching is also someone who is directing in the right ways and saying, watch out. Then you have the giving, the ability to give. You have leadership. The spiritual gift of mercy, the spiritual gift of being a prophet, the spiritual gift of service. That means to identify undone tasks in, the, in God's work um, and to use available resources to get the job done. So it's one who sees and knows how to get it done. Teaching, administration, spiritual gift of apostle, spiritual gift of discernment in spirit, Spiritual gift in faith, spiritual gift in healing, spiritual gift in helping others in their ministry, spiritual gift in help, spiritual gift in knowledge, word of knowledge, spiritual gift of miracles. And you can ask the Lord for one. <laughs> Spiritual gift of tongues, spiritual gift of interpreting the tongue speaking, spiritual gift of wisdom, word of wisdom, spiritual gift of evangelizing, spiritual gift of pastoring, spiritual gift of celibacy. I like that. We always wonder how they can be a nun and a monk. Now we know it's a gift. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh, I just love that. And, and how the God, God is protecting us when we don't have a partner. That's amazing. Shabara. Spiritual gift of being hosp hospitable, hospitality. Here comes another one. I really was like, whoa, so beautiful in a way too and very strong, spiritual gift of dying a martyrdom. Spiritual gift of being a missionary. And another one, spiritual gift of being voluntary, living voluntary in poverty. Now we understand a little more of the people in the Bible, how they can live, how they could die, Martha did. It was a gift. Yes. So we don't judge ourselves and we don't... If there are giftings in this and you think you get a little scared of it in some way, especially the last ones I read, you know, don't be scared. If it's, your, if it's the will from Him, it will be easy. The gift things are always easy for us to do. Even living in voluntary poverty. It sounds really weird, but it is. If you look at Stephen, the way he died and Martha did, he cried out to the Lord as they were stoning him. Lord, forgive them. That's a gift. Right? So don't be afraid of any of the gift where you think, Oh, I don't think I can do that. Well, then it's not your gift. Don't worry about it. Just draw in on the gifts that you felt the Lord spoke to you about. And if there is one that you feel that the Lord is stirring up, I've, I got a few that the Lord is stirring up for me. Just, just draw in on it. Ask the Lord. Pray over it. Ask Him for a revelation into how are you going to use it in which way. And there is one, there is your main, and then there is the second one. There is where you almost just as strong as the first one in it. And then you can have some that are your, uh, your third and, and fourth and fifth primary gift. They're, but they're not as strong. You, you sense it very easily when somebody... what people's gifts are. Mine, for instance, can you heal someone and not have the gift of healing? Yes, I do that, I, but I have the gift of faith. I don't have the gift of healing. That's not mine. And, and so forth. Can we 
Can we suddenly preach a sermon for someone? Yes, if the Holy Spirit comes and anoints you to do it, even though you're not a preacher. So, you know, but the, the main gifting is the one that's really important for us. And then we can step into the others as needed. The Holy Spirit will lead us in that. Just draw in on it. Ask him. I'm just going to pray here and close up. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will reveal more of you and, and people, Lord, and reveal the gifts, Lord, what they mean, Lord. And, Lord, um, hmm. and how we can help each other, Lord, in the giftings. Yeah, I'm going to pray for a revelation of that, Lord. How we can help each other in, in our giftings, Lord. When we help each other in people's gifting, we are helping them to assist to come closer to you, Lord. And so I'm asking you, Lord, uh, to reveal to us how we can help people in their gifting. Shabara sakuri otorombro na kaniya no no mono ro karombro sakuri otorombro. I am asking you, Lord, for that. Come with revelation, Holy Spirit. Fill this room, Lord. Fill this. Pour out on the video, Lord. When people listen to it, pour out your uh, <laughs> uh, revelation in this. Holy Spirit, come with revelation. Come with revelation. Holy Spirit, come with revelation. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, I pray. Revelation. Deeper, higher, more. Pray for that, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Pour out your anointing revelation in this, Lord. Yes, Lord. More. Help us, Lord, not to be nervous in your presence. Help us, Lord, not to be nervous. to move away from your presence, Lord, when the anointing comes, Lord. I pray, Lord, help us to go deeper. The flesh is weak. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you so much. More, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, that all the gifts that I've read out, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will come into action, into form. I pray, Lord, that you breathe on them. Breathe on the gifts, Lord. More more, more, breathe on the gifts. Come with your breath. Let us all hear your breath as I'm hearing it right now, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, breathe, breathe on the gifts, Lord. Holy Spirit, move in the gifts. And let us really know when it's really weird and radical, it's you. It's you, Lord. It does not look polite and nice. It looks like fire. It's a burning bush. And the sweetness and the sweet taste of honey. And it's also a roaring lion. And it's also an eagle flying. 
but everything is moving. I pray for that. Holy Spirit, move in the gifts. Father, I pray right now, as you're here, I pray right now that you will come with your master plan, reveal deeper for each of us your master plan for our lives, Lord. Come with revelation. I pray that people will <laughs> have dreams tonight about their your plans for our lives, Lord. I pray for that. There's always new levels, always new land to conquer. I pray, Lord, that you will show to us which land we need to conquer in each of us. So it's how I can be of more service in my own personal life and how I can be of more service in the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your sweet presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for that, Lord. I pray for it. I pray, Lord. I cry to you for this. I cry to you for this body of Christ, Lord. who is working in one accord toward your love, Lord, to praising you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Just feel right now the Lord is saying, don't be afraid, I am with you. Don't be afraid, I am with you. I am with you in the things you need to do. In things you need to stop doing. I am with you. There is some politeness that has to go. I feel politeness. I rebuke politeness in Jesus' name. Re uh, politeness of pleasing. And politeness in doing the way the will does it. All patterns have to go. Jesus, 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 Jesus.
There is misconception and misunderstanding of what, what politeness is, what it means. It has to go. It just has to go. Just lay it down. It just has to go. Ways of living, ways of thinking, ways of seeing the Lord. There is some politeness in seeing the Lord that's not really accurate. I rebuke that politeness in Jesus' name. Shabara Saku di Odoro Moro Nakana Mala Saku di Odoro Moro Jesus, 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 Living in politeness is covering up your gifts. I feel the Lord is saying. It has to come down. It has to come down. In order to go deeper and in order to receive gifts. This is not just for people in the room. It has to come down. Jesus was not polite. When we look at Jesus, he was not polite. He was loving and he was exhorting people when they were doing something wrong. Study the word. If you feel this is speaking to you, Study the word of the way of Jesus was acting. I don't, the Lord is really emphasizing on this one. And I just see ah, so many people will be set free if they get this, if they really get this part of this politeness, this fake politeness, this politeness from the devil. It's, it's fake, it's not real. He's saying, you can't do this, and you can't, you're too loud, you're too high, you're too tall, you're too much, you're too funny, you're too, ah, you're smiling too much, you're crying too much, or whatever. It's not polite. That's devil talk. It's not from the Lord. Lord, I'm asking you to come with deep, deep inner revelation on this one. There is too much of this, ah, Fake politeness. Lord, I pray, take it off in Jesus' name. I see it as shields around people who is actually disconnecting them from life. It has to come down. And they're disconnected from the Lord in that. Polite, politeness disconnects you from the Lord. Do not. Do not. Give it to the Lord and ask Him for new ways of life. He will show you the right way. I'm not talking about screaming and yelling all the time. I'm talking about acting and living the way Jesus wants you to live. And the Holy Spirit would lead you. We need your leadership, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for that. I break that spirit off. Break it off. I break it off over Denmark. I break it off over the northern countries, Scandinavia. I break it off over Europe, Germany. I break it off well in Austria. I break it off in Sweden, Finland, Norway, Iceland. I break off the religious spirit in Iceland 
I break off the religious spirit in Italy. We take authority over it. And Lord, we proclaim freedom. We proclaim your ways over Europe. Yes, amen. Your ways over Europe, Lord. Not the ways of the man, but your ways over Europe, Lord. And I break off all kinds of rebellious spirit in Germany. I see rebellious spirits in Germany, a lot of drugs. I break it off in Jesus' name. We break off all the religious religious spirit, rebellious spirit. I break off the spirit of witchcraft. Witchcraft is I know what I, I know the thing that I, I know the best way. That's witchcraft. No, we don't. Lord, I pray that we will come back to the order of life that you intended for us. We have no imagination of what that really is like, Lord, here on planet Earth, Lord. As a full country living like that, Lord, I pray for that. I pray for that awakening, Lord. I pray for that uh, intended life you had for us, Lord. I pray for that, Lord. I pray for that, Lord. Adam and Eve in the garden, Lord. Walking around with no sin. Free. Being together. In harmony, Lord. I pray for that. I pray for that, Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. We need it. Sweet Jesus. Have mercy on us, Lord, and help us. We need you, Lord. For our children and us children's children. And we need it, Lord. I pray for that. Let us live the intended life you have for us, Lord. In the sweetness of your heart. I pray for that. Come radical, Lord. Come radical, Lord, here. We need you. And turns people's hearts around like the oh. prodigal son that did just come to themselves, Lord. Oh. Oh. And help us, Lord, to do whatever you want us to do individually, Lord, and together as a group. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. from the ends of the earth. You go down to the sea and all the citizens. We need you, Lord. We need you. So much. That the settlements were careless rejoice. Let the people of Sila sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountain top. Let 
Let him give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praises in the island. For our praises fire will stay. I pray the that you will stay in I'm just going to close up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your words, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. With a shout, he will.